Brian Stelter didn't push back on the Washington Post reporter's claims there that the media's narrative on a, the abortion debate is largely dominated by the right. Joining us to break down some of that and other lowlights from the weekend's new show, today's company, political analyst Mark Halperin and the host of The Trish Regan Show, Trish Regan. Trish, I want to start with you. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I hate to date myself, but I started when I was four. Um, the Washington Post reporter there claims that this abortion on language is dominated by folks on the right, right? Um, I, I, that you have journalists who are very hostile to people who try to claim that they are pro-life. Um, I, I rarely ever see an article. In fact, I don't know that I've ever seen one that describes the movement as pro-life. It's anti-choice, anti-reproductive uh, rights, et cetera. I want to play for you a clip of Chuck Todd from the opening of yesterday's Meet the Press. The draft decision overturning Roe v. Wade has only added to the growing perception that the Supreme Court is just one more partisan institution, now a creature of politics, no longer above it, plus the court itself and its broken confirmation process, manipulated most recently by Mitch McConnell to manufacture this conservative majority that appears ready to overturn Roe in a country that apparently wants it preserved. It's pretty clear how he comes down on this. I, I just, I felt like when I was watching that, Brian Stelter let that reporter get away without any evidence that that's true. I, like I said, I have never seen an article that comes from the perspective uh, of the right. And yes, maybe once in a while they allow someone to call themselves a pro-life activist. But every one of the words in the article is, you know, anti-choice, anti-women's rights, etc. Sure. I mean, because that's, you know, the bias in the media. And uh, Brian kind of, I guess, proved his own point there. She's saying, well, you know, they allow, you know, people to define them however. He's allowing her to define herself, I guess, however she wants. But what I would just say is this. I think, you know, it, it comes as no surprise that there is massive liberal media bias that's very political. Let's be very clear. This is not, you know, authentic intellectually. It's just politics in terms of the media. I mean, I, I think any legal scholar, emotions aside, would look at Roe v. Wade and say, regardless of, uh, you know, party preferences, it was a poor legal decision. And I'm saying that, you know, with, with just looking at it on its legal merits, I'm not a lawyer, but, you know, one of the s second fo footnotes in that paper that was leaked was actually from a lawyer who was known for being a Democrat, John Hart Ely, and he was there saying, it's just a bad, you know, it's a bad legal decision. But we can't get away, or we can't get to that, I should say, Sean, because we're so trapped in the politics of this. And that's what's kind of tragic, because we're losing our sense of self, our sense of the justice of the court, and it's all thanks to bias from the media and the Democrat Party. Uh, I agree. Mark, I want to get back further in that show. Uh, Brian had on a, re a reporter, former reporter from CBS named Kate Smith, who's now a senior director at Planned Parenthood. He asked her about charges of bias in her previous reporting. Take a listen. How do you react to the conservatives who say you were biased in your CBS coverage? Look, if you're a, you know, a blogger online, you might not realize all of the different layers that someone goes through before they publish a piece, before they go on air. We have standards, we have lawyers. Before anything goes on air, there's been a thorough review of what's been going on. So I stand by every article I write. And hmm. I would say that making that accusation, you're playing into the right. Mark, you've been around your fair share of newsrooms in different... Um, I, I feel like she's being playing to the audience here, making it seem like it's much more complicated. Reporters can easily bring a bias to their reporting. Whether or not she did or not, I'm not judging, but she's acting like it would be impossible for her to do it. Well, and of course, Sean, the people who she's saying reviewed her pieces probably were just as pro-abortion, pro-choice as she is. And so it's not really uh, reviewing if everybody's got the same mindset. You know, there are lots of liberal bias in mainstream or dominant news organizations. I think uh, the abuse of abortion is probably, along with gay rights, is probably the most extreme. My favorite example from the weekend was a Washington Post profile of a neighbor of Justice Kavanaugh leading uh, protests on her, on, in her neighborhood against her neighbor. And it, the pictures made her look like a hero. There was a few paragraphs suggesting that some people didn't like it. But imagine if there was someone who was uh, supported right to life who was leading protests against Justice Sotomayor's house. Imagine how the Washington Post profile of that person would read.
I, I can tell you, it wouldn't because they wouldn't have interviewed her. Um, I do want to get you both to weigh on this quick since I've been harsh on Brian. I'll end with somewhat of a little bit of credit for him. Um, and I'll start with you, Trish, uh, just a, a few seconds because the incoming White House press this. secretary, um, the White House, incoming White House press secretary, Corinne Jean Pierre's partner, Suzanne Malvo, works at CNN. Brian Stetler actually brought it up and said he asked his own network how this is going to affect Suzanne's coverage uh, and what she can and can't cover. I give him a little bit of credit because he was one of the very few that actually talked about that. But I think that there's a too much of a cozy relationship with CNN right now. What are your thoughts on that? For sure. For sure. I mean, it's really it's like church and state stuff, right? It's really kind of uncomfortable. Um, I, I think it makes it very, very hard for Suzanne and anybody working around her to be not biased, right? I mean, they, her, her, her spouse or, or significant other is, is carrying the water of the administration and her job is to push this narrative. And Suzanne, of course, works for an organization that is simultaneously also trying to push a narrative. So I, I think there's a lot of conflicts of interest. CNN would be wise to say, okay, we got a Chinese wall here, and you know what? You're, you're going to go. You're going to be a lifestyle reporter for a little bit. I mean, maybe that's what they need to do. I always said during right. the Chris Cuomo saga, why don't they just hand over the first 15 minutes of the show to Erin Burnett, let her do it, and then Chris can come in afterwards when they've gotten through all the Cuomo family drama. Um, there's a lack right. of appropriateness there. Mark, it's not just that relationship, but d does how, how difficult does it make it in the briefing room when you're looking down and saying, my spouse works for the network that I'm about to take a question from? Look, it's tough because I don't think any family member, whether it's a significant other, a spouse, a parent, a child, I don't think it's fair to punish them and have their career harmed. I think CNN should, as Trish suggested, move her to a beat as far away as possible from this. But I don't. I think as long as it's disclosed, as long as there's scrutiny of the way CNN covers the White House, the way the White House treats CNN, I think that's the best you can do in this case. Because again, it's just not fair to penalize someone's career because they who they happen to be in love with. I, I agree with that, but I, my bigger point is I think it, it taints CNN as a whole. Anyway, a lot more to discuss than this. Just not enough time. Mark, Trish, thank you as always. Thanks.